take somebody like Al Pacino or Robert De Niro. Um, you know, you see them in different roles, in different films, right? And, you know, they take on a different character, they take on a different energy in their role. Right, it was the same thing. This is what I'm talking about. You, you, you listen to these, your influences, and you study them. You study the notes. You study their melody and harmony and the rhythm in which they're playing, and and you take down the lines. But that's not just it. You take on their energy and the intent and their character, and think of it like how an actor takes on a role. But as you do that, um, don't don't just leave it. At that, then consider how th how your influences are considering time and feel. All right, so how they're considering the time and the feel, and and their 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 sense of groove to what they're doing. You know how they're using Swart Sandos perhaps within um, within within phrasing, or you know, how they're pushing cer certain notes, um, how they're laying back from the notes. Um, and that then all has to do with articulation and how you articulate the, the notes or how you ghost the notes perhaps or, or how you swell into a note or swell out of a note um, the dynamic range of the notes so that's all got to do with, with taking on board their, their, um, their spirit and their sense of groove and feel and that is so important, you know, your sense of groove and feel within your playing is, is massive. So take away groove, feel and intent and the spirit and you just got the notes, right? So you want more than just the notes. And tone as well. Somebody's tone. If I say to you now, Miles Davis, Miles Davis, you know, just close your eyes for a second and, and to think about Miles Davis playing, his playing, um, you're going to hear that sound. You're going to hear that Miles sound. Perhaps some of you will hear the, the you know, the harmon muted sound that he, he plays with. If I say to you, you know, close your eyes now and, and hear Frank Sinatra, or close your eyes now and, and hear... I don't know, Bill Frizzell, or Michael Jackson, or Stevie Wonder, or Herbie Hancock. You know, you hear the tone of their voice. So, when we're listening to our influences, when we're studying these, this one particular influence um, that you're inspired by, you're taking on not just the spirit and the energy, but try to, try to find something in their tone, and try to, you know, really visualise orally that tone in mind and work out perhaps how you would manipulate that tone in, into your instrument um, and then you can take it a lot lot further and start looking into perhaps what mouthpieces they use and, and reeds they use and that's a kind of a tricky one I would that's I, I used to do that I used to you know look at somebody like Getz or Garbrecht or, or Coltrane and you know, I was always interested in what kind of setup they use, what kind of mouthpiece or reeds they use, or even instruments. And then one day I realised, hang on a minute, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not them. I'm me. I've got a different biological makeup. I'm me. I'm Russell Vandenberg, and I don't have the same lung capacity. I don't have the same um, diaphragm size. I don't have the same throat width. I don't have the same um, um, oral. Um, dimensions as those players have so I've got to kind of understand my biology my physiology and um, see what's right for me instead of using I don't know, trying to, to use the same kind of mouthpiece that's right for Jan Garbrecht or, or, or Stan Getz or, or, or John Coltrane or Joe Henderson or something like that so but using what's right for me try to Still visualize their tone and their breathing, and you know try to understand how they're breathing with the energy and the intent that they that they put into their their music, and try to imagine producing that sound myself. So this has all got to do with visualization, right? So which is a massive part of learning music, visualization. 
and um, the more you can visualize yourself doing making that sound um, the more perhaps you can it, during your practice time um, um, work towards how you can articulate in that kind of way. So once your influence's language becomes evident in your own playing, um, try to decipher their code. That's what it is. It's like deciphering a code. Every different person you play has got a, 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 a way of playing. It's a code that you kind of unlock. Um, and But the reason why they play in a certain way isn't just because they're playing on their own. They're not. You're listening to them play with a rhythm section, right? You're listening to them interact. So let's not forget that, you know, improvisation in jazz music is about interaction. So if you're a frontline soloist, like a saxophone player or a trumpet player or, or, or even a pianist, you know, bass player or drummer, it doesn't matter what instrument you're playing, to be honest. You're interacting with the other members of the, of the group. So there might there might be certain phrases and certain lines in a solo that you're studying and you sort of think to yourself how did he do that or why did he do that um, or why did he go louder there or why did he go quieter or why 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 don't just put the solo under a microscope so that you're just seeing that guy's solos on its own you know Take a few steps back and listen to how that man is interacting with the other members of the group. You know, if you listen to somebody like Joe Lovano, listen to how he's perhaps interacting with somebody like John Schofield or um, Hank Jones or, you know, Alvin Jones. Uh, you, you listen to what they're doing rhythmically. Listen to how they're interacting melodically. Listen to how they're interacting harmonically. Okay, so never take away the solo that you're studying. Never take that away from how that is interacting with the other members of the ensemble. And by doing that, um, you're building your musicianship up, you know, you're not just working out on your playing, you know, it's great to be a good player, you know, a very technically competent instrumentalist, but is that it? Is that all you want? Um, perhaps you just want to be a better musician, I think, I mean, for me personally, I, I think being a, 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 an as good a musician as you can be throughout time, um, instead of just being an instrumentalist. You know, there's a difference between a musician and an instrumentalist. I, you know, I, I, I really aim to be a better musician in my own right. So that's why I also study composition um, and arranging as well, um, which is which then also bleeds back into into my playing and my my improvising on the saxophone. The more you transcribe as well, um, you build up this vocabulary um, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and at the same time you're working on your technique and it's building your technique up on your instrument and you know you're becoming more competent player and your your ears are growing, and you're you're discovering more about the music that you're studying and the influences, and it's all coming together little bit by bit. And then what happens is you start forgetting things. <laughs> so you spend all that time studying somebody's playing, you know, for a long time, and and then you'll find yourself looking back over your shoulder at a time when you were studying somebody and you can't really remember these lines anymore. Don't worry about that. You probably forgot it for a reason. Um, and if, you know, by all means, if you want to, you know, reinforce those lines, you know, go and do so, you know, so it's completely up to you. 
but I was some student saying to me, oh, I can't remember that anymore, and I learnt it, and I, couldn't, I can't remember it anymore. And there's probably a reason for that. There's probably a reason for that. And that's something that you've got to ask yourself. Um, for me personally, yes, I, I used to get a bit paranoid that I couldn't remember everything all the time. And the reason for that was is because my mind wasn't there anymore. My consciousness wasn't in that zone anymore. Perhaps I didn't really feel much of an affinity anymore with that time of my life when I was studying that person. And I was in a different, different time of my life where I'm inspired by something else. And that's the organic nature of learning. Okay? So, you know, that, don't worry about forgetting things because it served a purpose, it built a technique, it's made you aware of so much on a, music, on a musicianship front. It's, um, you know, it served its time, it served its purpose. Um, and, you know, think of the lineage of your learning. It's organic and you're always learning new things. That's the beauty about learning music. One of the one of the questions I get is how long should I stay on you know studying one of one of my influences? Um, it's up to you. <laughs> you know if you really 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 love the playing of Joe Henderson and you can't get enough of it, that's great. That's brilliant. You're having fun. So that's what learning should be. You should you should have fun all the time while you're learning. Um, but. If you're tailing off it and you want something else in your playing and you feel like you haven't learned everything there is to know about Joe Henderson's playing or everything to know about whoever you're, you've been listening to, it doesn't matter, you know. Well, just look, just always keep on um, knowing that your learning should be fun. Your learning should be, it should be inspired and it should be fun. You should be enjoying what you're doing and don't get so stressed out about it. Um, if you start getting anxious because, you know, I don't know, perhaps uh, so much time has elapsed and you, you can't yet play like one of your major influences, don't. You know, just enjoy the process and um, you don't have to know everything there is to know. But what I would recommend is just continue learning to discover yourself. Because by the end of the day, you can't really emulate those people because they are them and you are you. So it's not just a matter of being in complete, exact imitation of someone, but to discover yourself. Um, go to my website which is www.russellvandenberg.co.uk you should see the link underneath here somewhere and um, yeah, when you go onto my homepage you'll see a little email tab um, in, the, in the, I think it's the, the right top corner just click it and say hi and I'll email you a transcript of, of this, this process that I've been explaining okay, well thank you for viewing and um, hope to see you again sometime, bye bye